So over the past several years, I've recorded hundreds of my own podcast episodes, and I've also edited podcasts for a lot of other people. So I wanted to kind of walk you through some of the stuff I've learned over the years on how to like speed up uh, making a podcast. So I'm going to do all this in Pro Tools. You can really do most of this in any DAW, but um, Pro Tools is what I choose. To me, it's the easiest to work with. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to set up a new um, template. And I always like to date when I'm, you know, if I'm recording this myself, I'm going to make this the date of whatever I'm, whenever I'm doing the actual episode. But right now, um, this is for a client of mine. And I'm going to put the name of the podcast, which is Health Razors, and the name of the guest on the podcast, put it in the client's folder. So this is the template. And I think that the first tip I can offer people is have a good template. Basically how this template is set up is I have a master bus here. The vocal audio of the interview goes to this vocal bus, this voiceover bus, and that has just a basic kind of like multiband compressor and um, a limiter on it. And then I have three other tracks. The first one is the intro of the podcast. Ready to light that fire by doing the things that make you come alive. The intro music and kind of her voiceover intro is always just loaded in as well. She has one ad that she's running this season. So that is already loaded in and I've dropped it kind of where the ad mark usually comes in, which is around the 10 minute. I always find somewhere around 10 minutes to throw that in. And then she also has an outro that um, here, the outro, you can kind of see that um, the music kind of plays really quietly so that it can kind of fade into the final outro, which kind of fades up. And then there's a whole outro that she's pre-recorded. So all of that is already loaded in. So really all I have to do to edit this episode is load in the interview audio, which I'm going to do now. So those, these are the two raw audio files that the client sent me. I'm going to drag those up to these audio tracks. And now I'm going to delete these. And as you'll see here, so in this project now, um, these two audio files are routed to the, uh, the voiceover bus that is here. The outro, the ad, and the intro, those are already mixed. So I actually don't need to run those to something that has like additional limiting or compression or anything. I just need those to go, you know, how, whatever, however loud they are right now, I just need them to come out. So this stuff... The raw interview is routed to the vocal vocal bus, but then these three things are routed just to the master. And the master has just like a tiny bit of limiting just to catch like anything that might pop up. So basically, this is the only thing that I'm going to be really editing is the raw audio of the interview. And the first thing that I do is now that it's loaded in is, you know, everything is synced up. So the first thing I do is I do a quick mix of both. And I have a um, template in this template, I have kind of a chain that I like to run stuff through. The first thing on a vocal that I like to put, and I'm going to solo these right now, um, the first thing is a denoise from Isotope. I'm actually going to... But the first thing that I do is voice denoise, RX, Isotope. It's magic. I like... I don't know how it does what it does, but you put this on and it just takes care of like hissing and stuff like that. So that's the first thing that I put on. And then the second thing is I, I have a limiter that kind of catches, you know, the the loudest peaks and kind of just crushes everything so that nothing is like jumping out a ton. And it also brings up the volume because a lot of times this raw audio is really, really quiet. The journey I'm hearing, which is you had to kind of go through this relationship with the golf as a container um, of discovering, learning, about yourself and what serves you, what doesn't serve you. So, and I just want to make sure that, you know, I kind of level out all of that stuff. So it's like 6 dB of compression. It seems a lot, but, um, you know, it catches the, in podcasts, a lot of people are kind of thinking about stuff at this level and they're kind of talking like this sometimes and it's a wide range of dynamics. So I kind of just um, squash that down to uh, make sure that everything is, Cool. And then the next thing is it's a channel strip and it's just kind of color EQ. Um, so I'll play this now. And I kind of have the EQ points set at 10K, which gives a nice air to the vocal or the you know voiceover. Somewhere around 1 or 1.5K, clearing out mud at around 3 to 500, and then kind of boosting the resonant low-end thing to make it sound more broadcasty. 
about yourself and what serves you, what doesn't serve you. And you learn that the punishing, go hard or go home kind of attitude might have worked for a little while, but in the end, it's not sustainable. Then you took your little bit of a break and then came back to it like, no, there's really something for me here. Let me see if I play with it this way. And then it turned into more of a a love connection itself. So again, that just kind of boosts up low end, kind of brightens up the high end, gives it some some more like presence and then cover clears out some of that like muddy stuff. And then, uh, and I'm mixing on these in ears, so I'm, I'm not sure how accurate these EQ moves are because I'm not on my monitors right now. But after I do that, I hop to the end of the chain and I do a de-click, which this kind of removes some of the mouth noise that you'll get on, in dialogue sometimes. And also just any like random pops and ticks and um, like tongue flicks that some people do. And then sibilance, which this is just a de So sibilance is nice because it takes care of um, those S's, but I'm kind of doing like one, two, three, four rounds of de So this API is taking care of some of the de This SSL, I'm doing a little bit of compression here. That's taking care of some of the de This sibilance is taking care of some of the de And then this, this top band of this multi-band compressor takes care of some of the de So all the S's and the T's, t t all that stuff gets taken out by, you know, just multiple rounds of kind of targeted compression. And then the last thing I do is a more corrective EQ. Like some rooms have weird frequencies that like kind of resonate and stuff like that. So I'll use this to kind of clean that stuff up. And then I do usually do like a low um, kind of cut boost thing um, that creates a little resonance for like the boomy broadcast low end stuff. Go through this relationship with golf as a container. Um, of discovering, learning about yourself and what serves you, what doesn't serve you. And you learn that the punishing, go hard. So that sounds pretty good. I'll do a, I'll, I'll take all this off and then turn it all on so you can hear the difference. With the golf as a container um, of discovering, learning about yourself and what serves you, what doesn't serve you. And you learn that the punishing. Kind of just gets you a really close present um Voice over, and then let's do the other guest. So I'm going to have to do a little bit more with this, and I might have to use a few more tricks that I didn't have to do with Nadine to kind of get it to sound a little bit more friendly on the ears. So that second plugin is a de-reverb, an isotope. You can basically hit this learn, and it'll learn kind of how the reverb is working because webcams, mics that aren't close uh, with dialogue, it's just there's going to be a whole lot of ambience and stuff, and once you start adding compression and whatever, that stuff really starts to just like get crushed into the sound and um, I want to try to avoid that if I can. So that de-reverb coming second after cleaning up the noise is, is, is cool. Those are all the moves that I do. De-noise, de-reverb, um, compression, color EQ, corrective EQ, uh, you know, taking care of sibilance and then um, de-essing and then, you know, click. So the next thing that I do is now that this is all loaded in here, uh, I'm going to solo these two again. And the next thing that I do is I duplicate this playlist. That way, I'm going to start editing now. Now that I have duplicated the playlist, I can always get back to the raw interview if I need to. So this next step isn't always super beneficial. It doesn't really just scanning through here. It doesn't look like there's a lot of like big sections where there's like umming and erring and stopping and lots of pauses. But with guests that have, you know, some guests that aren't used to talking a bunch, um, aren't used to being on camera or being on mic a lot, they'll be really slow with their speech. They'll say a lot of ums. There'll be a lot of starting a sentence, having a big pause, you know, and to get rid of all those gaps, the easiest way is in Pro Tools, there's this thing called strip silence. And basically what you can see is it's going through and it's finding these little gaps where there's nothing going on and it gets rid of them. So I'm gonna go up here to shuffle mode. So you can adjust all these parameters, but basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to strip. And if I close that, you can now see that there's all these little gaps um, between. And the annoying thing is in Pro Tools, there's no quick way to close up all of those gaps. Um, Even if you're on shuffle mode and it deletes them, it doesn't quite close them all together like you'd want them to. But um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go through, and when I'm on shuffle mode, I can just kind of drag these to the left a little bit, and they kind of just bunch up. And I'm just going to go through and bunch all of these over. But this accomplishes a lot because it really 
closes up all of these gaps. It really, like sometimes I'll go through and just do this to an episode and that's most of the editing and it will clear out like nine minutes uh, from a conversation. And, you know, nine minutes of dead space across, you know, a 30 minute episode is significant and clearing this out, um, you'd think it would sound really unnatural or really weird and it it usually doesn't. It ends up... um, just kind of tightening things up, making it seem a little bit quicker paced, making it seem a little bit more um, coherent. And a lot of times this also will help you edit out um, any ums and errs because it kind of isolates them into this one little blip that you can really easily start to see and um, get rid of. So I'm going to fast forward through this so that you don't have to watch me just kind of slide all these to the left. And by the way, if you're watching this and you know of an easier way to delete all that space and then have everything collapse to the left. Um, there are people that have tutorials on it, but not, none of them really seem to um, totally do what I want them to do. So um, this is how I'm doing it. This is a good instance where, you know, I could see as I was sliding stuff over, this looks like something I don't want in there. And it's just a kind of tongue flick. I I don't want that in the interview. And again, this way of editing, it kind of just gets a preliminary where it gets really easy to catch a lot of that stuff, really speeds up the tempo of stuff. Okay, so that is kind of the initial edit. And now you can see we went from 26 minutes down to 23 minutes. So we edited out three minutes of just dead space, just nothing going on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to Grab everything that I just did. And by the way, both of these are grouped so that anytime I edit one, it edits the other. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to smoothing. I'm going to make crossfades between every little clip. And that just means that we're not going to get any clicks and pops as you know this plays out. Now that all of that is edited, I'm going to duplicate again. And that way, when I start editing and merge all these down, I can get back to this pre squashed down, pre joined together, just in case. Um, kind of getting rid of some of that dead space uh, did me did me wrong. And now I'm actually going to go through and just listen to the episode, edit out what needs to be edited out. And honestly, for the most part, what you can do now that you've gotten rid of all that dead space, you can really just kind of go to where kind of each person turns over. So here, from right here to right here, uh, the host is kind of pitching to the guest and the guest is talking. A lot of times, the biggest points when you're editing are going to be those times when one person stops talking and the next person starts talking. So you can kind of just really quickly go and smooth over those transitions and get kind of a lot done. So I'm going to find the beginning of the episode. I'm just going to go through and really quickly edit this. And again, I'm on shuffle mode and that means anytime I delete something, Pro Tools is going to make the whatever's to the right of it snap toward it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that and then start the episode. So I'm going to go through and make this transition a little bit easier. I think for me, I I have a version of healthy that means... So again, all I did was delete the um that was there, delete the kind of tongue flick that's right here. Mind. I think... Like we don't want we don't want that. And again, people do it subconsciously and they've done it their whole lives. So some people just have that tendency to start a sentence with. Uh, but we want to get rid of that. And I just kind of tighten it up so the um is gone, the I think and the I think. She said it twice, that's gone. Just again, it's subtle, but it makes it feel just a little bit smoother and makes it easier for the listener. And into that. So tell me about... So there, I'm just getting rid of the breaths. And again, you can kind of just scan through audio and see like, like this is some kind of percussive tongue flick. This is a inhale uh, before someone starts talking. And you can buy, just visually kind of go through and as the thing is playing, you might be editing or thinking about the content of it. And that's cool. But as you're doing that, you can actually scan through the whole episode and just kind of look for these different kind of ticks and pops and long breaths and kind of just delete them. Like this right here is a breath. First, 20. And I can see that just by looking at it and I can go through, clip it out, and now it's not there. Again, this isn't always a big deal, but if you're going to be here listening to the episode, you might as well kind of also put some finishing touches like that on it. 
This looks like an um to me. Let's see if I'm right. Um, like it just looks like an um. Like this is what an um looks like. So I can actually get rid of a breath and an um as I'm scanning through. The goal here is not only to make it easier on the listener, but also to make the guests sound more intelligent. And all of us say ums and errs just way more than we ever think we do. And, you know, in daily conversation, it doesn't seem um, like, like that big a deal. But when you're on a recorded format like this, the more ums and errs and pauses there are, uh, it just kind of can add up to the the listener not perceiving the person as knowing what they're talking about. When in reality, we all just do it way more than we think and cleaning this stuff up. Again, especially if someone isn't that comfortable on a podcast. Honestly, and again, this is where my role as an editor comes in, not just cleaning up and being surgical with EQ or compression or whatever. The host is kind of just recapping everything that they've covered right here. And I, I just don't think that's necessary so I'm actually going to delete it. Putting so much stress around it. And I'm learning how to get better. I want to ask you as an athlete. So my daughter and I were talking about this recently. So to me, that feels so much more clean uh, because you don't really need to summarize something. And again, in the moment when you're just having a conversation, it can be hard to think through this, which is why you get an editor like me to go through your podcast. But you just really don't need to be precious. Just because you it felt right in the moment doesn't mean that the listener will need it. And right there, I just felt like it wasn't necessary to recap um, what was going on there. Because again, I think all of it was stumbled. All of it happened because the guest said, you know, I don't really remember the question or whatever. And I just, I don't know if we need it. So we got rid of it. So that is the edit. And again, you can get as granular, like this conversation isn't that long. And I had no notes from the client of like, hey, at this moment, we talk about this and I want to edit that out or whatever. Sometimes the client will send information they know they want edited out. Um, but this didn't have that. So again, I'm going to duplicate this before I do this. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of these and join them once more so that they're like a solid unit that I can kind of move together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the ad. I'm going to place the um, interview at the end of this intro. Health together. Happy to have you here today. So now I need to find a place for this ad. Found it. And I'm learning how to get better. I want to ask you as a This feels like a very natural place to have a nice long break. Um, because again, that was a spot that we edited in the first place. So I'm going to slide our ad in here. Slide it over here so that it picks back up. And now we have the beginning of the ad. I want to ask around it and I'm learning how to get better. And now here's an ad from our sponsor. In the mood for coffee? I want to ask you as an ad. So that's the ad spot. And then let's go to the end to make sure that all this works. Sam, I loved you. talking to you. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. Thank you. All right, and that's 36 minutes of editing on a uh, what was a 30-minute kind of segment at the beginning of it, and it's now edited up, and now I send it to the client and say, hey, do you like it? And if so, they downloaded this and upload it, and if not, you know, they don't. Uh, they have notes and whatever. So to export this, I'm going to highlight that all. I always label it V1 um, so that if we get into multiple edits and revisions of something, I have kind of a track record of that. Um, sample rate, it's going to be a MP3, sample rate 44.1. I do 160 kilobit. Um, that's pretty low for an MP3, but this is a podcast. The, the higher the bit rate, you know, the the more space it's going to take up. And since with podcasts, a lot of times you're you're juggling a certain amount of storage per month and stuff like that. Um, you know, I want to be cognizant of that. So 
that is the podcast editing process. This is a really quick overview. So if you have any questions at all, you know, you have additional questions or suggestions, you've seen me do this now and you say like, hey, you ever thought about this or, you know, whatever, put those questions, comments down below. Uh, I'd love it if you'd like this video, give it a thumbs up and, you know, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.